Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the channel. Today I'm doing another drum set walkthrough. So this is my current drum set. It's always changing every like, you know, three to six to 12 months. I'm always switching stuff out, trying to shake it up. This channel is all about electronic drums, conversion drums, and hybrid drums. Right now, the reason why I've changed it around is because I'm reviewing the Pearl Mimic Pro drum module. I wanna test it with drum triggers inside of acoustic shells. That's gonna come a little bit later, but right now I'm testing it with all Roland pads. So we're gonna see how it holds up to a bunch of pads from a Roland T30K and a TD-17 sort of like mushed together to make one giant drum set. I'm not really used to playing with a kit this big. I usually just have like a couple crash cymbals, a ride cymbal, you know the setup that I have, but I wanted to see how big I could make this set. Now I got a comment from somebody asking what happened to my acoustic size kick drum. And it's still over here, it's just like underneath a pile of gear. It's coming back to the kit, but for right now I just wanted to go with all electronic drum pads. And I've got quite a few different things here. Pardon the cable mess. Uh, there's a couple of reasons why it looks so bad. There is a cable snake still on there that's not really plugged into anything. So there's like twice as many cables as there should be. And also I ran out of black cords. So I had to go with some of the drum tech uh, clear cables. They look sweet on a chrome drum rack, but because I have a black drum rack and you know black carpeting, it kind of stands out. But you gotta do what you gotta do. Let's start off with the cymbals. I have two CY13 cymbals and then two CY12 cymbals. So four crashes in total, and then a CY-15R as a ride cymbal. The hi-hat is the VH-11. Those two floor toms are snare pads from different drum sets, and those two tom pads are actually tom pads. My secondary snare is another snare drum pad. Again, it can be either a tom pad or a snare pad, depending on what drum set you see. You'll see that as a snare on like a TD-25 and a tom on a TD-30. As you can see, I've got two kick drums here. I got a Roland KD-120, and then the secondary kick drum is this Roland KD-10 from the TD-17. I've seen people have videos where they have a little kick drum pad off to the right side, and I thought it was a good idea. It is kind of fun to have, but I don't use it as much as I thought I might, just because you have to reach kind of far over to get to that pedal. People were asking whether or not a double kick pedal would fit on the TD-17 drum rack. Yes, you definitely can. You just have to open up the drum rack incredibly wide, and then you can fit a double kick pedal. Now the secondary snare, I kind of use this and this uh, secondary kick drum kind of at the same time. This snare and this kick I've set to be more of like a boomy sound. And then this is more of a tight sounding kick drum. And then this is set as a piccolo snare on the kit that I'm currently playing. I just like having a piccolo snare and then a deep snare so you can switch back and forth depending on what you're playing. Now the one thing that really needs to be fixed with this set is that this symbol right here, this guy isn't actually plugged in. So unfortunately I just don't have a cable long enough to reach all the way from there, all the way down the drum rack. I think it gets to right about, yeah this is it. So it gets to right about here, it's just a little bit too short. I need to go buy an extender cable that goes from female to male. Just an extra, I don't know, two feet long would do the trick. And I also wanna get some more black cabling just because that fits in better because I have the black carpeting. Now obviously you can't fit everything on this TD-17 drum rack. So here's what I'm doing for the extra cymbals and stuff. This is on a DW uh, cymbal stand. I actually have an extra extender arm that I attach to right about there so I can have two crash cymbals on this one stand, really heavy duty. This one over here, I think it's a PDP cymbal stand, I can't quite remember, but it's decent, it wasn't that expensive. And I've got three snare stands. So the one snare stand is holding up uh, this secondary floor tom. I got it at Music Go Around in Columbus. This snare stand right here is holding up the main snare. Actually, I think that came with my Sonar Force 2001. I spent like 30 bucks and bought this guy off of Amazon. And it works, you can tell it's kind of cheap, but it's holding up the secondary side snare. So obviously this drum module is the star of the show, the Pearl Mimic Pro. I've got this for like one or two months because a subscriber let me borrow his. And I've really been enjoying this. Two years ago, I think, I did a first impressions video about this, but it's kind of changed since then. And I've got more and more of appreciation about it the more I use it. I wouldn't recommend this drum module to beginners because there's a lot going on here. If I was just setting this up for the first time and I didn't know anything about electronic drums and I had to connect those pads to this drum module, it would be a bit of a nightmare. It already took me a lot of work and I knew what I was doing. There have been a lot of changes since this first came out. 
For example, there's been a ton of different software updates that have changed the way the user interface is, like the loading times are faster than when this first came out. Also, there's been a sound library update, so you literally have more sounds than when this first launched. And the interesting thing is that those are two different kinds of software updates. You have to update the interface, and there's a second update for the sound library. You can run the old sound library with a brand new software update. So it's kind of weird, but they did that because the sounds, there's just so many gigabytes of data. And if you already have it, you don't want to keep, you know, loading in the same sounds over and over again every time there's a new, you know, just interface update. So this is a beta. This one isn't publicly available yet, but it's like 99% of the way there. So they gave it to me early. I love the fact that like the loading times are faster. Some of the interface options are just laid out better. It's easier to change things. There's also the little everyday aspects of the drum module that I continue to like. For example, you just tap the kick drum and you can hear the way it sounds. If you don't like that kick drum, you press load instrument, and now you can go through all these other kick drums. I just love that stuff. And then you can just tap them and you'll hear them. Now it takes a little bit longer to load the sound when you're loading in a new instrument, but these are heavy samples. Like this isn't simple stuff. So obviously it's gonna take you a little bit longer. And also stuff like the mixing settings, like you can control your reverb, your room, your overhead mic volume. You also have the individual volumes for all the stuff. Everything is measured in decibels, which is nice. Decent control over stuff like compression. So if you press on compression, you have all these compression presets. And also you can really dial it in by adjusting the attack, the release, the ratio, the threshold. Again, you'd have to research on this stuff to really know how all that affects the sound but the tools are there for you if you know how to use them. And even just the home screen is pretty darn useful. So you have your click track volume, your aux input volume, your player volume, because you can load in sounds, or not, not just sounds, you can load in entire songs and then put them in a playlist and then play them without even needing your phone if you don't want to. There's also the aux input right here. You can control the room volume, the overhead volume, and different stuff from right here. This is a very powerful drum module. I'm not gonna go too in depth here because this is just a walk around video. I'll be doing an in-depth review about this. It's a little bit complicated. It takes a while to learn how to use it, but when you really dial it in, you got some great sounds here. I will say you gotta be a little bit careful when adjusting things inside of the drum module because you can accidentally bump the wrong thing. Uh, for example, when I was bumbling around just trying to figure things out, I assigned that kick drum sound which was like a pearl kick drum, also to that ride cymbal right there, or that crash cymbal. And it wasn't that I was changing the sounds, I was actually linking the one sound to two pads at the same time somehow. You also gotta take the time to dial in the sounds. If you don't like how not punchy the sounds are out of the box, just throw a compressor on it and you'll be amazed how these drums come alive. It really just depends on what kind of genre of music you're playing. The tonal characteristics inside of this drum module are very rich. You just have to bring it out by using different settings inside of the drum module. The sounds inside of this and the interface and everything are way beyond 99% of drum modules that are out there. I think this came out in like 2017 or 2016 and it's still like a couple years ahead of the competition for some reason. But let's talk about how I actually go about filming and recording the audio and stuff. How do you record a drum cover in the Justin style? Talking about the cameras first, I've mentioned this before. I've got a moving camera slider right here. You can buy it on Amazon. I have it linked underneath this video if you wanna go check it out. But I'm basically getting a side to side shot kinda of like this. And it goes back and forth at whatever speed I wanna set it at. But I don't want just that one camera angle. I also want the overhead shot. If you've been watching 65 drums for a really long time, you know that I used to have the T30K, so much smaller than this, it was over here in this corner of the room. And I had this perfect overhead camera angle that it was, it was basically beautiful in my opinion. And it was just a smartphone wedged into some ceiling pipes, which I never show on camera anymore. Because that camera angle is gone now, and because the drum set has shifted over to here, and because I use DSLR cameras now, like this Canon ADD and this Canon SL2, I'm trying to get like an overhead shot in front of the drum set. So it's gonna be kind of like a tilted angle. I think that does have a kit lens, but if I need to, I also have a wide angle lens, which gives a little bit of a fisheye look, but sometimes you're in a, just a situation where you don't have any room and you need to distort the image a little bit just to fit the entire drum set in frame. I also tested getting something like, like this camera tripod right here and just putting it behind me while I'm sitting at the drum set. And I can almost get the camera angle that I want doing that with the lens. But the problem is this camera angle right here 
this will see a big ugly tripod sitting behind me as I'm drumming. That's why I have to go with the two cameras in front of the drum sets and get the right angle so I'm not getting those dumb windows in frame. I do a lot of like, you know, walking around in circles in this basement basically, trying to figure out how the heck I'm going to film a video or what I'm gonna say. And so there's actually a lot of wasted time that goes into making videos. So the good news about filming a lot of drum covers or just a lot of YouTube reviews is that the more videos you make, the faster you get at making them. Because I've figured out this camera setup now, I don't really have to worry about this anymore. If the footage turns out good, which I hope it does, I won't have to spend as much time messing around with the camera angle and everything because it's kind of just, you know, set in stone now. I get, actually, it's not set in stone because I have to tear down that tripod because it's my main tripod and set it back up again. But you get the point. It's usually going to be easier and quicker for me to find that one camera angle now. Now, another area that really slows down the recording of drum covers or reviews is getting the audio right for your drum set. Over the years, I've recorded using iRig, which is great for doing quick drum covers on Instagram or something, but not great for long term. I'm gonna do this professionally. I've also recorded using the Roland Air Recorder app, which is great until they stopped updating the thing and they'd never made an Android version, I don't think, so now I can't do that anymore. I've also recorded drum covers using a Tascam audio recorder, which is awesome, but the problem is the interface is kind of janky and a little bit confusing to use and I accidentally phased the audio in a video that I made on the ATV A-frame. So only half the people could hear it because their headphones were phased in a certain way where they could hear the audio and others couldn't. Now I despise that Tascam audio recorder. And when I'm really serious about getting good audio, I record into this Scarlett Focusrite interface. For like run and gun audio recorders, I use the Zoom recorder though. This is what I used to record myself when I was on the roof, inside the boat lock, um, just outside in the woods or whatever. And this is what I used at NAMM as well to record audio from a bunch of different company booths. The point of this whole big monologue is to mention a big weakness of portable audio recorders. I have a message for the people that are trying to record their electronic drums with this professionally. Be really careful that you're not sending too hot of a signal to this portable audio recorder because it will just basically distort. Now I know what you're thinking, whoa, Breaking news, Justin discovered that you will distort audio if you send it too hot of a signal, who knew? But there's a reason why I'm bringing this up. I'm not an idiot, I know you need to record at negative 12 or negative six dB in order to make sure that you don't have any distortion happening. What I didn't really realize was that the gain knob on here, the gain buttons, the recording level buttons, they affect the gain after the distortion has already taken place. And while I was at NAMM, most of the audio came out okay, but there was some audio where I had it up too loud even though I lowered the gain on the audio recorder so it was in safe levels according to the screen and according to some of the, my monitoring that I was hearing, some of the audio just turned out bad. So I gotta be really careful next time I go anywhere to make sure the audio isn't up too high because turning down the gain on the recorder won't save you. One theory that I've heard on like a forum somewhere though was that this gain is in post. So you're literally just turning down the audio that's already been distorted. Now it doesn't seem quite completely true because when I turn it down really far, like negative 30 dB, and then turn it back up in post, it does sound better, there's like less distortion. But in general, what I've learned about this is that you have to turn it down at the source. You can't just turn the gain down really far inside of this and expect that to compensate for too hot of a signal. One thing that I forgot to mention is that even with all these pads on this drum set, I didn't max out the drum module. You can see that right down here, I have two extra inputs. Now one of those inputs is gonna be taken up by that, that extra symbol that has too short of a chord. But even after that, I'll still have one extra input right here. And I think you can actually split inputs. I don't know for sure, but I think you can. I'm never gonna have so many pads that I'm gonna be like, wow, I wish I had more inputs. So I'm completely safe. Now this right here, this cable snake input, that's not for extra pads, that's for extra outputs. And if you're gonna use a cable snake, having it for outputs is the best case scenario. And they also have quarter inch outputs right there, headphone, they've got MIDI in and out. This module has nearly everything. 